he's another character that you really don't see a lot because there's not a lot of good Gang Yul's out, uh, out there, but he's a really strong character and after reading this tutorial, uh, well viewing this tutorial, not reading, so hopefully after that you'll see why he's such a great character. So as usual, I'll be going over all of their moves, that's going to be including both normals and specials, and I'm going to be describing the uses for each move so you get an idea of how to use every move under his command. Alright, now let's start with his close normals. So we have close A, it's pretty standard, there's nothing that interesting about it. Um, I don't think, it has some pretty weak properties as an anti-hop. There it has slightly of a good hitbox, but because it's lower angled compared to other close A's, I wouldn't rely on it as much, uh, in general actually. His close B is a much better move. Um, it's two hits. The first hit hits low. It's special cancelable into the stomp on the second hit. Um, it's really fast. And it's got good range detection. So if you're trying to quick max and you're pressing a button a little bit too early, and if it happens to be B, at least the chances are you'll get the close B. So even from here, he can get his close B. Whereas most characters, I feel like they'll get a far normal. Uh, what else? It could cancel not only into his stomp but into his Resin Kaku, but I'll go over you know some of the specials when it comes around. Alright. Next up we have close C. Now this move comes out really slow. That's eleven frames. And eleven frames is uh, a far normal, and even most far normals in this game are faster than that. Um, the only use you have for this move is if you're doing an optimal quick max combo. And even then, you don't want to, you know, maybe you could start out with it, but you certainly don't want to combo into it from a quick max because there's a high likelihood that it's going to drop your combo. Uh, it does more damage than your close D in terms of combos. Uh, the range though is pretty terrible and the speed, like I said, also terrible. The only no other noticeable thing is that it's neutral on block, but again, that's not really going to do much for you. So just ignore the close C as a normal, forget that you even have this move. Close D on the other hand is much better. It's faster, comes out in 6 frames, so that's almost twice as fast. It's two, uh, 2 hits, and you could late cancel this special. So let me, let me show you how it looks like when it's cancelled quickly. And let me show you how it looks like when it's cancelled pretty late. So you can cancel it so late that even the moves that you special cancel into are going to whiff. So you see that's a pretty late cancel right there. So close normals, just use close B and close D. They're both two hits, they're faster than their punch counterparts, and they're better hit confirms in general. Uh, close D uh, has pretty good range detection as a close normal, so if you can hit him, even if you hit him at the tip, with 4D and go quick max confirm, you're gonna get close D pretty consistently. All right, moving on to his far normals. We have far A. It's basically you know the far far version of your close A, which is universal for pretty much every character. Again, I'm not gonna really say much about it. It does have some pretty good height for an anti hop, but there are better buttons to use, like his far B. So his far B comes out just as fast, and it's a better angle. Uh, you can use this. You know just as well to anti-air even and another great thing about this is that it's special cancelable so if you're playing footsies with gong Yo and you feel like you're gonna get a good hit on them so just use far b and always special cancel into the stomp which you can easily confirm into uh the dp punch follow-up all right uh what else yeah it's just a great poke it reaches pretty far uh, as far c uh the pattern with Gang as you can see, is that his punches are not really that great. Um, it, this move comes out kind of slow as well, it, like 11 frames. And um, there's no far cancelable properties or anything like that. Actually, I don't even think it's super cancelable. So again, ignore his far C. Now, far D is a move that you're going to be, it's a button you're going to be using a lot. It comes out really fast. And no matter how far away you hit their opponent with it, you're always going to be able to quick max into a close normal and get a full combo off of it. Uh, another thing, 
uh, it's only minus three, so it's not punishable. Uh, unlike some other, you know, far normals. So even if they try to whiff punish it, he recovers so fast that it's a little bit. It's going to be difficult to catch him. And as you can see from the angle of his move, uh, it also serves as a good anti-air, like that. And because it comes out so fast, even if you press it late, you're still going to be able to at least trade. That time I got a far D, or close D. But yeah, so for far normals, you're going to be using far B and far D a lot. And his far D, you know, it's just one of the best pokes in the game. Alright, now let's move on to his crouching normal. So, crouching B for Gang Yo is really good in this game. First of all, you know, it's a low, just like any other crouching B in this game. It combos into itself. There we go. Um, this is not a combo string, it's a link. Because his crouching B is plus 3 on block. Now, if you're trying to read frame data in this game, and you get uh, plus 3, or plus anything on block, you just add two more frames and that's the frame advantage on hit. So this plus three would be a plus five on hit. So that gives him enough time to throw out another crouching B. So that's why it could combo into itself. Now combo B, uh, crouching B also links to crouching A. So you can get this string. There we go, oops. Trying to do it into crouching A. And it does combo. I'm just fucking up right now. There we go. So yeah, crouching B is really good. Even if you're not gonna cancel it into anything. Well you can't cancel into anything. You can't you just have to combo into something else. Alright. Um what else? Since it's plus three on block, you can use it as a really safe poke and keep advancing in on your opponent and test their reactions and see what they're gonna do. Crouching A does nothing interesting about it other than it allows you to combo from crouching B and um, that's pretty much it. It's, special, it's his crouching light special cancel. Uh, you can't combo it into anything else so except another crouching B actually. So you could string crouching B, crouching A into another crouching B but that's pretty much it. Alright crouching C. This is going to be an average anti-air. Now um, it it's average because Ganga is a short character, so it's likely. Well, in general, this game there is no clean anti airs with normals. There's always going to be situations where it's going to trade. Uh, this one, it's pretty decent though. It's not bad at all. Another thing about this is that it forces forces the character to stand. I don't know if there's any significance for this for Gangil. There's nothing where uh, a standing opponent is going to be useful for any kind of combo for Gangil. So, but it's there, just you know, just for your knowledge. Crouching D, it's this. This is sweep comes out, comes out kind of fast for a sweep, but you know because Gang is a short character, the range for this move is also gonna be kind of short, below average actually. Uh, it's not cancelable either. You can't do any kind of cancels off of it. It's just a fast sweep, and you know what? It's actually minus twelve on um, block. So it's pretty punishable, I believe. So let me test that out. Having the character hit me with a sweep and then he's blocking afterwards. There we go. That's a punish right there. So it's not a move you want to be throwing out carelessly. Alright, so that's it for his crutching normals. Let's move on to his jumping normals. Alright, so unlike his punches on the ground, his jumping jab or jumping A is actually really good in this game. It's a, it, you could use it as an instant overhead. It's not technically, well, it, it is an instant overhead, but the way you combo into his hung gets his on into a full combo is not exactly instant overhead. And that's because for this to work, you actually have to wait a bit. Because if you do it too early, if you do it this too early, A into hung gets his on, it's not gonna combo. You have to do it kind of late. Like that. Uh, I'll tell you about the timing when I move on to his on gets his on in the special section, but just know that it works as Gangil's instant overhead and it's special cancelable into his on gets his on. His other air normals are not special cancelable into on gets his on, I believe. Let me test that real quick. I don't, I don't want to be wrong. Okay, yeah. 
for sure is jumping A is the only special cancelable air normal. Jumping B is clearly an air to air. Um, even though it looks like it's gonna whiff on crouching, it actually doesn't. So yeah, can, you can use it both ways to be honest. Uh, it's a good move to use for coverage. Uh, for example, if you're anticipating an air to air, so it's a move that you could just throw out and it hits, you know, the hitbox on this is pretty good. It'll hit pretty above them. And even if they didn't jump as you anticipated, at least you'll hit them on a the way down. So it's a safe button to use in the air. And let's see what else you can. Uh... Oh yeah, there's jumping C. Um, jumping C, you're gonna pretty much ignore it. It's not. There's a better button than this. It's outshined by his jumping D. His jumping D comes out really fast. It comes out as fast as his jumping A. And normally, you know, hards don't come out as fast as normals or lights. And it covers all angles. You can use it as an air-to-air, -air, under neutral jump situation, in a forward jump situation. You can use it on people who are crouching and you know overall it's just better to use jumping A and jumping D. So yeah. And let's see what else. Now that's about it. In area situations, I would always use jumping A when you're going in for Hung gets his own pressure, especially if you're trying to combo into it. And otherwise use jumping D. But don't uh, oh yeah, sometimes you can use jumping B if you want to stay safe. But never use jumping C, that's for sure. Alright, let's move on to his blowbacks. So, standing blowback, it's decent range for a character of Gangyo's height because he moves forward a great distance. Uh, you could do a conversion off of this, but it will depend on the distance between when your opponent hits the wall and how far away you are. But usually, you should be able to follow it into Stomp. Again, um, I think it's more its more of my timing being crap because I don't really use this conversion a lot. Because I don't really throw out blowbacks, but it is possible to get the stop a lot of the times. See, that time is pretty close. There you go. And maybe I need to do it a little later. Yeah, that kind of timing. So I don't have the OTG timing for when it comes to wall sticks, but, but there you go, it's possible. His jumping blowback, it's it's uh, it's pretty average, it's nothing remarkable. Honestly, if you're going to be taking into air and using air normals, you're better off using jumping D or jumping A, and even jumping B. There's really no reason to use jumping blowback other than to maybe, uh, if you have them in the corner, you anticipate a jump and you just want to keep them in the corner, but otherwise there's not much use for it. Alright, command normals. He has 4B, a high angle nutty chuggy. It's an overhead, even on cancel, so let me have the CPU block. I have him on guard all. It's gonna block that, and. Uh, actually, my bad. It's not overhead on cancel. I was thinking about a different character. I think I was thinking about Angel. But, anyways, it can string from his normals. And even if you cancel it. Um, even if you cancel it on uh, from a normal, it's still going to be plus. It's plus whether you use it raw or if you use it in a string. And there is a conversion you can get off of it. You can get, and this only works on crouching characters. So what you do is that crouching B. Crouching B is the only normal that's going to combo off of his overhead in this version of the game as of 2.1 or is it 2.03? Well, as of this version of this game, uh, just remember it's always frame advantage, it's overhead, and yeah, that's about it for this move. Um, you could use this move to pressure a lot because because <clears throat> since it's plus on block, you could just push him into corner with this, but do know that there is a hole to this. So, see how I'm just mashing buttons? So I'm not gonna win after the overhead lands because he's gonna be a plus. But you can count, you can uh, interrupt between the normal and the overhead. Now of course that situation changes if I was using a different normal, like a hard normal. But there you go. That's one way you can counter it. All right, his next command normal is gonna be in the air. It's gonna be back C. It's a cross up kick similar to Iori's. And uh, who else has it in this game? Iori. I was gonna say Robert, but that's in 13. But yeah, similar to Iori. And I'm sure most of you, you know, use Iori, so you should be familiar with that. But the purpose of this 
It's only if you're jumping over the character. If you try to use it in the front, it's gonna whiff completely. Now there are situations where um, you could do some weird mix up where you stay in the same site and use this and it will combo. But uh, I'll, nah, I'm not gonna go over that because it's impractical. But yeah, that's something you should know. For his cross up, it doesn't have a lot of hit stun in this game. So you gotta hit, you need to hit really deep. And if you, just to ensure that you're gonna combo after this, it's probably best to use step, uh, close B to combo into it. It's difficult to utilize this as a cross up because Gung Il is, is not because it's a shortcut, it's because he has a short jump arc. So for example, right now I'm hopping towards a character, I'm not jumping over him. Some other characters will be able to jump over with hops, right? But Gong Il, he, even on a crouching character, he's, he's not jumping over the character. You'll have to hyper hop, but if you hyper hop and they're standing, then you're not going to be able to go over them. So. Uh, if you want to utilize this move, you're going to have to use it from a jump in. So one jump in and then a second jump in after that. And that's because when most people block a jump in, they go into a crouching animation right away. So let me test that on myself. Oops. There we go. Actually, no, I don't. I didn't input the... There we go. Now, nah, wait a minute. I tricked myself. I had it right the first time. All right. There we go. That's one way you could utilize it. So force them to block and then you jump over and you throw that out. And since it's a hyper hop, it's pretty hard to react to because they do have to block on the other side. But there you go. Alright, so let's move on to his specials. So we have Hangetsuzan and this is an air only special. It's quarter circle back kicks. So let's go over both versions. First, the light version or the B version of Hangetsuzan. So this move can combo from jumping A and there is a specific timing to it so let me go over that before I go over the rest of this move. So <clears throat> first of all, you jump in the air, don't do the jumping A instantly because it will not combo. You have to do it at the apex of the jump sort of, a the apex at the hop, meaning where he reaches the height of his jump. Actually that's, I don't know if that's the... It's more like as he's rising to the top. I can't get it 100% of the time, so I apologize for this demonstration. But at least I'm passing on the knowledge. So once you get that, you can always combo into his close B. And I'm just not. There we go. You can always combo into his close B. And sometimes you can combo into his close D. That time I didn't combo, but. There we go. Ah, damn it. Alright, I won't waste any more time trying to do it, but you know it's possible. Alright, one thing about A Hungetsu's, uh, B Hungetsuzan is that it doesn't change his air trajectory. So, when you're jumping forward, backward, your aerial momentum doesn't change, unlike Kim's Hungetsuzan. So, it's, a, it's pretty interesting to use as an aerial uh, special option. It recovers fast enough. Because it recovers fast enough to combo, it also means that your frame advantage every time you do a uh, air hang gets on. It doesn't matter if it's a B version or the A version, but both of them are going to be plus on block. Obviously, you can't do it from too high, or else it won't be plus on block. So let me go ahead and demonstrate with the one guard option. So as soon as they block, they're going to jump up. So if I do it from that high, see how the gung the green gungo is. Uh, gonna land us before the white gungo that's because he has the advantage or rather it's more like a negative on block because I did it from so high up you want to do it from really close to the ground so that way you have that much more frame advantage to the opponent and therefore you can continue your pressure against him all right so um, if you hit them in the air with this let's see If you hit them in the air with this, <laughs> wow, that combo! I didn't mean to hit him when he was grounded. If you hit him in the air with this, I don't think you could get a conversion off of this, so I wouldn't do it. Um, the conversion you could get off of B Hungetsu on the air 
is usually from a combo. So I wouldn't try to do it from a raw or a uh, you know outside of a combo conversion. All right, the D version is slightly um, it's very different actually. It does the same amount of damage, but his momentum changes. See, there's the B version right now. The D version moves him a little bit more forward than the B version. So here's a comparison. Here's B Hungetsuzan and here's D Hungetsuzan. So you notice how he's that much closer after using it from a hyper hop? Alright, the other difference is it's a hard knockdown. Oops. Get on the ground. And because it's a hard knockdown, you'll be able to convert into his stomp 100% of the time. So it doesn't matter if you hit him in the air or on the ground, you'll get that hard knockdown. Alright, the di another difference is, you remember how I told you that the jumping A can uh, could combo into this? Well, it doesn't combo into the D version of Hangetsuzan. It will never combo. And let me test one more thing. I could have sworn near the beginning of the when this game was first released that it was overhead, but I guess I remembered wrong. So for those wondering, it's not an overhead in either versions uh, of the special. All right. Oh yeah, another thing. It has a pretty huge hitbox, both of these versions, but more so the D version, just because uh, he it moves him forward a little bit. So for example, I can hit him from over. Oh, actually no. I can hit him from over here. And I'll get that conversion. All right, EX Hungetsuzan. This has a huge hitbox. It has invincibility while he's in the air uh, and uh, on startup. It's plus on block just like the other versions, and also cancelable, but uh, but doesn't really combo. At least not to my knowledge. And if you hit a grounded opponent, you can't really get a combo off of it, unlike the A version. So there's really no use for this version of Hangetsuzan unless you're doing it in a combo. Alright, moving on. We have Hakikaku. Or, well I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so I'm just gonna call it the Stomp. So, this move comes out really fast. It's special cancelable or combos from lights. So it makes it a really hit easy hit confirm and it has three follow-ups. So, the first follow-up is no. Um, well actually not first, but one of the follow-ups is another low, an overhead, and one that actually combos. So, alright, other properties of this stomp. So, besides hitting low, it's frame advantage, and you know, has follow-ups, combos from lights. On block, it's plus one, so you're not insanely frame advantage. It, if the opponent uses a, a button that's faster than yours on block, then they can kind of poke you out of it. but it, Again, it does depend what button that you do use, and it depends how far away you are too. So, Gungyo's lights normal, they're not going to reach, but his 4D will reach. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go over the follow-ups. So the first follow-up I'm going to go over is the overhead attack. So, that's going to be quarter circle back with kicks. Oh, by the way, both the stomps, the B and D version, they're exactly the same. And the range of the stomp is pretty far. Far enough that you can cancel from far B. Alright, so back to the overhead. So, just do quarter circle back. It doesn't combo from the stomp at all. It's just a mix up if the opponent blocks. Now, both versions, are two of the follow ups, the overhead and the double low, they both have a follow-up and it's the same exact follow-up for both of them. It's a forward kick move and you can super cancel both of them uh, in both instances. You can super cancel the overhead or the low. And that's it. Alright, so uh, one instance you want to use this, the mix-up is obviously only if it's on block. If you do get it on hit, you'd rather be doing that. Unless you feel like trolling the opponent and you know get a mix up anyways and probably do a super cancel. Alright, but let's move on to the safety of this move. So it is negative, it's negative four on the overhead. And if you do the follow-up after that, it's negative nine. But there's enough pushback that makes you safe. So it's specifically punishable. Let me try to punish with Gangyo. Alright, 
Alright, so I set the compare to go ahead and do that. Oops. Yeah, won't be able to punish with Gangyo. If a character has an EX Rambu Super that will be able to reach them in time, then he may be able to punish. But for the most part, it's relatively risk-free throwing out this mix-up. Of course, if they have a guard cancer role, they can do that. But in that case, you just wouldn't do any follow-up. You would just let them go ahead and do that. So it's risky to go ahead and try to guard cancer row on this unless they have a good read on you. The other follow-up is just the opposite. It's a low attack, has the same follow-up, which is also safe on block. So, you know, if you do the overhead enough times and they go low afterwards, or sorry, if they go high afterwards, then you know, you would just go low and mix them up even further. Now the last follow-up that I'm gonna go over is a DP motion punches. There's no version, uh, there's no difference between what version you use, whether you use the A version or the C version, they're the same exact thing. So you do this obviously after you get the stomp and you have relatively, it's a decent amount of time. It doesn't, it's not strict, but it's not also like late enough that you get a, uh, cancel late into it but a fair amount of time to combo into it obviously if you do it on block you gotta be insanely punishable so that's something you don't want to do alright so what else can I say about this move let's see Well, that's about it for all the fobs. There's not much else to say about them, and they all they all pretty much speak for themselves. So let's go on to the EX version of this move. So this is a low attack. It reaches full screen. There's a hard knockdown, and it has very slow startup. There is no follow-ups to any of the mix-ups in this version of the move. You can't do the overhead afterwards, or the low, or the DP uh, follow-up. It's just this move by itself. So you can use this against projectile users, um, but honestly, why would you be in raw max mode with Gangyo? There's really no point to it. So, there is a useful one bar combo that you could use with EX Stomp, but otherwise it's just one of those moves that you use if you drop a combo and you're still in quick max. Alright, now let's move on to Rasenkaku. So, it's gonna be this move right here. That's the B version, and that is the D version. So the B version, you could combo it from lights, and you can air reset in the corner afterwards, though the timing is pretty strict. Let me try to get it at least once. God dang. Alright, I have to mash it to get it out, but there you go. It, it is possible to reset afterwards. It's easier to reset if you do it, let's say, during a combo, in an air juggle combo, and use the light version of this. The reset will be much easier to get off than what I'm doing right now. Alright, so this move, um, there, there is no jump cancel, unlike the D version, and on block it's unsafe, so don't use it on block. Alright, the D version is the version you gotta be seeing more often, so this move does not combo from lights, the D version. You have to combo it from hard, hard normals. Alright, so once you get the the D version to connect, you can do a jump cancel, and it's only possible on hit, you can't do it on block, otherwise that would be pretty broken. So anyways, after you get the D version, you could do a jump cancel, and you could follow up with Hangetsuzan, or you could do an air reset. So that time I tried to go for the cross up, but I failed. There we go. So that's the kind of thing that you could do with D Hangetsuzan. Uh, sorry, Resen Kaku. Alright, now the EX version. Oh, by the way, the D version of Resen Kaku is just as punishable as the light version, so don't even think about, you know, throwing out this move randomly like that. Alright, EX Vents uh, Resen Kaku. It comes out faster than both of the versions, and you can jump cancel also only on hit. And because the jump cancel timing is much faster than the D version, you do have more combo options. Alright, but I'll go over that when I go over the combo section. Um, so let's see, uh, in terms of combos, there's no reason to use um, EX Resenkaku over EX Hakushu, which I'll go over next, but 
uh, except at certain combo situations. It depends on Gang Niu's bar and what position he is. But for now, let's move on to uh, Shakashu. So, Shakashu is a forward moving move. It has multiple hits. And the A version, uh, it does a combo from lights. This move can only combo from hard normals. So it does a fair, mis a fair amount of damage, although you're not going to be finding a lot of use for this move by itself because it's very punishable. Um, it's minus 9, even though there is some push block, most characters far and almost will be able to reach him and go into a full quick max combo. So it's not a move you want to be using a lot except inside a combo. The D version is something you do kind of want to use outside a combo. It's just as unsafe, but it does have super armor frames during this pose and a little bit uh, right before he moves forward but uh, the super armor friends is just mainly within this stance right here so it's a good move to it's a good move to throw on a neutral if let's say you just you know expecting him to run up and do something you can anticipate that and punish but it is it does require a read so it is a risk you can use it against projectiles as well um, don't do it from a uh, full screen away because if they throw a projectile and then you use this to absorb it, they'll have enough time to just react and block to your uh, block your C Hakashu and then punish you afterwards. All right, let's see. Um, oh yeah, so the C version of Hakashu. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is it doesn't combo from hard normals. It doesn't combo from any kind of normal, probably from a blowback, but. Uh, that's about it, and uh, you can hold it to increase, you know, your your window of super armor. But that's just to maybe psych out the opponent. Otherwise, it's really unsafe. So don't, so don't throw it out too much. Now the EX version of Hakashu comes out just as fast as the A version. It has super armor too. It can't be held unlike the C version. But one thing. That the, C, that the EX version is useful for is that you can jump cancel it just like his hard and EX version of Resenkaku. And because this move does more damage, it's also more optimal to use in the combos. Alright, so that's it about hit that's it for his specials. Let's go over his supers. So we have Hienzan. It's a fully invincible move even on level one. Um let's see, the EX version has slightly more invincibility and there's three flash kicks obviously it just does more damage uh, let's see his stomp super is also an OTG so you could do a hard uh, a, you could do a uh, conversion off of Han Getsuzan for example although the, the scaling on it is pretty terrible though so I wouldn't recommend it unless it's to kill See how the the stomp I get 118, and then if I add a super, I'm only gonna get 194, so barely 100. Uh, this move hits low, the super here, so that's one thing you get, one funny thing you do. Um, it is you can also advance cancel into his Hienzan. His Hienzan, on the other hand, cannot be. Oops. His Hienzan, on the other hand, cannot be advance cancelled into anything obviously it's because he's already taking into the air so there's no it's impossible for him to advance cancel it all right so the ex version of his stomp super it doesn't have any super armor or sorry it doesn't have any invincibility so there you go in case for those who are kind of hoping but uh, you know it doesn't exist now his climax does have invincibility it's quarter circle back, quarter circle forward, both kicks. It has full invincibility on wake up. Uh, it does go through some projectiles, and it's punishable on block, just like you know most supers and climaxes. But hey, it's a, it's a desperate uh, reversal option if you ever decide to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. And I fucked up there. I fucked up there again. So there we go. Alright, so even though it does have invincibility, I guess the invincibility is really short, so it's not that much of a reliable of a uh, reversal option. 
If you're going to use bar to use a reversal, it's better to use, use the enzyme. There's more invincibility options, uh, invincibility uh, windows for that move. Alright, so that's it for Gang Yil's Norms and Specials and Supers. So let's go over, let's go over the, the, the real thing, the real stuff of Gang Yil. So, links. So you could do crouching B into crouching A. You could get easy to confirm off of that. Or you could do crouching B into close B for two hits that go low. It's easier because, you know, crouching or close B has another two hits to it. Or you could do crouching B, crouching B into crouching A. Yeah, why am I fucking this up? There we go. And if you do that, you can get up to five hits in a combo just off of lights. There we go. Alright. So confirms into quick max. So it actually confirms on hit. So obviously if you get any combo into his stomp, this is the combo that you want to do. Now if you get a stomp and it's on block, then just mix up with a high or low. Or you could just stop at you could just stop at the stomp and then continue your pressure and go into a jump in and things like that. Alright. Another another thing you want to have down is far D into quick max. You have a lot of time to react to his far D on hit into a full combo. And you know, just get that full conversion. But yeah, so that's what Gungo has without bar. But if we do use bar, actually before I go, let me just move on to his combo. So if you get a D grab and you're close to the corner, you can always get his stop. You can't do it from mid screen because obviously they're way too far. Uh, unfortunately, if you do his stomp super, you're gonna have to use the EX version because the regular version is not gonna connect. It's not fast enough. And even if you get the EX version, you won't be able to. Even though you can max cancel it into his climax, it will not connect. Normally it will connect, you know, like right here if I just use it raw, but it won't connect after an OTG grab. So uh, that's something you want to know before you jump into Gangyo and you somehow have him on anchor and you think you're gonna kill with a off of a D grab, you, but you won't. All right. So moving on to combos, he has a one bar mid screen combo. So if you get any confirm and you get a quick max, always go into close D. So once you get that close D, you want to do EX Hakushu, late cancel. Sorry, no, I'm going over his one bar combo, so let me stick to that. So any confirm into EX Hakushu, jump cancel into EX Hangetsuzan, and then you use the A version of his um, A version of his Hakushu. So let me just have the let me just have the computer record this. Alright, that time I did it late, so... Alright, this is gonna be the proper one. There we go. So you can get this anywhere in, this, uh, in the middle of the screen. So again, EX Hakushu, EX Hangetsuzan, and the A version of Hakushu. Now let me explain the timing of this combo first. So you can just cancel it into EX Hakushu whenever. You do a jump cancel, and you wanna wait a bit before you do EX Hangetsuzan. If you do it too early, then the A Hakushu is just, some of the hits are gonna whiff or it's gonna whiff completely. But don't do it too late, or else obviously they're gonna be too low for you to convert off of it. So, just one more demonstration. EX Hakushu, delay cancel, into that. All right, now if you have, uh, alternatively what you can do, is Iatakashu jump cancel into D Hung gets uh, into EX Stomp. So that does 301 damage, whereas the other combo. Well actually it does it does more damage this way. But anyways, if you if you have if you want to keep the pressure on top of him. Sorry, I mixed myself up there. 
if you want to keep the hard knockdown and stay on top of them, then you can use EX Stomp. And it does have quite a bit of a recovery, so you don't have that much of a good setup, but you are close enough to stuff them on wake up with some sort of normal. So that's one thing you could do instead of the other combo. Alright, so if you have the corner, uh, you can extend this combo even longer. So let's let me have the computer do it actually without me trying to talk because I'm just gonna mix myself up. So Alright, uh, sorry guys. As long as I get it soon. That time I did it too early. There we go, okay. Starting to remember the timing on this. There we go, okay. So, here's how to get going. You do the EX Hakushu, you slightly delay your EX Hong gets his on um, a little bit lower than usual. You get the D, uh, the D version of your Senkaku, you can jump cancel, and then when you do the jump, you want to wait a bit in the air before you do the hard version of Hangetsuzan. So let's go over that again. So, EX Hakushu, EX Hangetsuzan, D Resenkaku, uh, jump cancel, hard Hangetsuzan into the stomp. So that's one combo you could do in the corner, it gives you 355, so it's really good for Gangyo. And a great thing, another great thing about Gangyo is that because the EX Hakushu moves him so much forward, you'll get that corner carry. So you don't have to exactly be in the corner to get it. I was just shy from the corner. So there we go. There we go. So even if you just shy from the corner, you'll still get, um, you'll still get the enough corner carry to get the full combo. All right, so. That's Gangyo with one bar. So let's move on to Gangyo with two bars. So if you're on point and you want to use both bars into EX Super, here's what you want to do. Let me start from this side of the corner. Alright, so you see there's a slight variations from the one bar combo. So you do a confirm into a really late cancel. B Hangetsuzan and you want to make it so that you're doing the super right when Gangyo hits the ground because if you do it too early that it's gonna whip. The lower you do it on the ground the better. So if I do it for example too early like that it's gonna whiff completely. Even if you're in a corner it's gonna whiff. In order for this combo to land you need to do the B Hangetsuzan pretty late. Because the later you do it, the faster you recover because you know you hit them earlier, so they're still in the juggle state that much longer. If you hit them too early, the, the juggle state will wear off by the time that you reach the ground to do your EX Hienzan. Alright, so that's his 2-bar combo with Gangil on point. If, uh, if you're on second, if you're on second, what you gotta do, actually let me test this out real quick. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Alright, if you're on second, what you wanna do instead is you wanna combo. Sorry, wrong one. What you wanna do is combo into his EX Resenkaku, and then go into his EX Hangetsuzan, and then do the EX Super. Pretty simple, right? You can get it from anywhere on the screen. Um, and it does slightly more damage. Actually, wait, let me test that. Let me test that real quick. A quick damage comparison. So this is on point Gangyo. You're gonna get 464. If you're playing second Gangyo. Actually I didn't get all the hits for that. You get 468. Actually the damage is not that much different. So um you know there's not that much benefit in using EX Resenkaku. In fact, I think it's better to use EX Hakushu because all the hits will connect no matter what. Whereas uh, EX Resenkaku, you do kind of be, you need to be closer for all the hits to connect. All right, now if you're using another, let's say, um, hmm, let's 
Galaxy EX Hakushu Jump Cancel Delayed EX Hunkatsuzan. Nah, that's about it for Ganyo combos. Um, I'm just gonna mostly go over the practical combos. There are other combos you could do with Gangyo, but um, most Gangyos you're gonna be want to be playing on first or second. I'll go over that in a bit. So, all right. Off of mix-up conversions, though, let's say you get the stomp, an overhead, or the low. You can always combo into Hienzan, or actually, if you want to use three bars. You will have to cancel after the first hit of the mix up because the stomp won't the super stomp won't connect after you do the the follow up of the moves. If you do the follow up they're gonna be in the air, so obviously the stomp's not gonna connect. So if you want to use three bars off of the stomp mix up, that's one thing you could do. Or you could just blow it on EX Hienzan this uh e EX uh, EX Hienzan. Because it's gonna be easy to combo after you know you get both hits of the mix up. Alright, so that's it for Gangyo in terms of combos, normal, specials, and all that stuff. Now let's go over the good and bad. So, uh, good things about Gangyo, he has easy hit confirms. You have two lights into stomp, or three hits, and another three hits, and both of them are lows. And you have close D, which hits, and another far D. So, all of those can easily convert into a quick max combo. You can always combo after overhead. It's pretty. Once you practice Gang Yo, you'll be able to get this pretty consistently. Now that's something a lot of characters don't really have: is an instant overhead into a full combo. Uh, let's see what else. You have damaging combos anywhere with on sc anywhere on the screen with one to two bars. So if you're playing on point, you're playing second. It doesn't matter. If you have one bars or two bars, you'll still be able to get uh, at least 300. Uh, let's see. Oh, and the one bar combo is even more damaging when you have the corner because you know the the extended combo. Also, combo differentiations, uh, the differentiation, the the variations between his different combos are really minimal. So, for example, if you if you're doing a, a confirm on hit or block, and you're deciding between you know, oops, you're deciding between using one bar or two bars, the you have a lot of time to decide. How, how much bar you want to use and which move you want to use. For example, if Gang Yo and I'm using him on point, I have two bars. But instead of using the, the second bar, I'll just use the I'll just use the one bar combo if I can finish off the opponent. So what I'm saying is he has enough time to make that kind of decision because the ex Hakushu is there and it you know it lasts a lot it lasts a long while. And if you after the EX Hakushu, it's just gonna be EX Hangetsuzan or the regular Hangetsuzan. So again, it's not it's uh you know you won't be mixed up trying to decide which combo you're gonna do in the middle of the combo. Alright, what else? He's got plus frames on a lot of things, so his stomp is plus, his overhead's plus even on block, his uh let's see. Uh, even though there's ways to deal with it, it's uh, you know, they have to get used to it first. So if you combine this with his really good normals like far B and far D, he's a really good rushdown character. All right, what else? He's got ways to do with fireballs with C Hakushu. It's limited compared to some of the other characters that have, let's say, like a reflect and stuff. But it is, you know, some way he could deal with a fireball. Obviously, you don't want to deal with it from full screen. I think the best way to deal with fireball characters is if they do a block string into the fireball. In which case, after you block the normal, you would just go into C Hakushu and then, you know, right in their face as they're throwing out the fireball. And what else? Uh, you yeah, get mix ups that lead into a super cancel for more damage. So, his stomp, for example, or the overhead into quick max. So, Gang Hill has a lot of offensive pressure. Now, what are the downsides of Gang Hill? I don't really think there's much of a downside to Gang Hill. He could deal with projectiles just fine. Um, the, he has no problem being outranged. Even though he's a short character, you'd think, you know, he would have stubby normals. But really, he's got fast normals that reach long, and it's easy for him to whiff punish other characters because of his fast far D. And it's difficult at the same time to actually whiff punish Gang Il. Not to mention his far D can anti air, and keep them in the corner. And it's reliable anti air because it comes out so fast. So really, you're not gonna have 
difficulty being outranged with Gangil. Um, what else? He his damage output with or without bar is 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 actually pretty high. So if you get a no bar combo, that works anywhere on screen. Um, what else? He doesn't require difficult execution outside of instant air on Getsuzan, but again, that's something that can be easily fixed if you just practice him enough. Uh, if I have to do, if I have to say anything that's bad with Gangyo, it's difficulty dealing with close-up pressure. So characters who have really good hops um, or blowbacks that could keep them locked down, uh, Gangyo doesn't really have an answer to that because his close normals they're not really good for anti-airing unless you're just crouching and just spamming crouching C, but it could be risky if they are able to jump over you. But other than that, Gangyo is a pretty solid character. He's really strong. And I think a lot of people are sleeping on him because mainly they don't know how to use him. You see Renault using him to you know great success, but even then, there's there's a better way you can utilize uh, Gangyo than even what he's using with him right now. All right, so moving on, uh, position. So uh, my favorite position for Gangyo is first because he. Uh, a, he's just excellent without bar. He doesn't need the bar. He's got normals. He's got he's got uh, the stomp. It's plus. And if you put him on uh, if you put him on point, they're gonna have to burn guard cancels to deal with his plus pressure. So if this game had no bar, Gangyu would probably be one of the better characters because his no bar game is just really strong. Now, if you want to do more damage with Gangyu. Uh, you would just put him on second because you have enough meter to do his two bar combos. And if you put him on third, um, I think that's the weakest way to play Gangnil because third position doesn't give Gangnil anything that the other two positions don't. And it's honestly not necessary. You do have like EX Stomp into Super, but there is the Stomp Super is not optimal in a lot of Gangnil combos. You only get it off of a conversion. And even then, if you do the EX Stomp into his Climax, that's not really a lot of damage compared to other characters' firebar combos. So really, all you're getting is just more use, is more ammo for his two-bar combos. But again, there are a lot of other characters that could do way, way better as an anchor with Gang Nil. It's not that Gang Nil is a bad character uh, on on anchor. It's just that there are much better characters that could do the anchor position than Gang Nil. So. Again, just use them on point or use them on second. Alright, strategies. So if you want to learn how to play Gangyo, there's a lot of things that you need to have under your belt as a Gangyo player. So first of all, the ability to combo or confirm into stomp every time you get a D Hangetsu So whether you're jumping or hopping over fireballs, whether you're doing a neutral jump uh, D Hangetsu to kind of like uh, catch their pokes, Anytime you get this, you just want to throw out. You want to be able to react and get a D, uh, get the stomp right afterwards. It's just extra damage, and you know it just adds to your pressure. And you can get, you know, you can build bar afterwards too. So you can get another stomp and just build bar. So it's it's all about optimizing your gameplay. All right. So uh, what else? Bla basic block strings into stomps, into mixups, and the ability to super cancel them on hit. So. If you're pressuring them and using a lot of stomp, uh, think about what you want to do with the stomp. Don't just always go into this mix-up because eventually they'll be able to just react to them because they are honestly they are both reactable mix-ups. So take advantage of the plus frames. Do another stomp. You know, stomp them with a normal. Uh, you know, set them up if they don't know that the stomp is plus. Go out of far D and get a full combo off of it. Uh, all right, what else? Uh, get his instant overhead down. Definitely, definitely need to do that. Instant overhead into B Hung Kazan into a full combo. All right, and let's see what else. Learn how to confirm into quick max from 4D, or and overhead into crouching B. So 4D, obviously, I feel like a lot of players need to be able to learn how to, when you're playing neutral, throw in a far normal and then react on a hit into a quick max, or even do it on block. You know, just in case you get the hit, you'll still get that full combo. And if on block, you can just react, maybe block, and do some sort of other mix up. But something that you need to have, a confirm wise. And let's see what else. Um, yeah, off of overhead too. 
And if you get an awful overhead, just remember to use Crouch and B, Quick Max Cancel, into Close B. And there you go. So you get a full combo off of that. Alright, so that's what you need to have under his belt as a Gangyo player. Oh, one more thing. Don't use Hakushu unless you're using the C version to go through Fireballs. A lot of early Gangyo players will throw out a lot of Hakushu and it's it's not it's just not gonna work because it's punishable. So don't use it unless you're dealing with Fireballs. Alright, so other things. So if you're playing defensive or neutral with Gangyo, use 4D to poke, stuff them out, anti-air them, convert into a quick max if you have the bar, Alternatively, you could use far B into stop. So if the opponent's going in on you multiple times and you know you don't you don't feel like you got a button to press or you don't know what to press, just go to far B into stop because if they get hit by it, then they'll probably get hit by a stop too. And if they get hit by the stop, you know, or, or both hits, you can convert into your own combo and turn the tables on them. Now if they block it, then you're a plus. So either way, it just turns the tide in your favor. So that's something you want to do is a counter poke B into stomp. All right, what else? Uh, neutral G, uh, neutral G, what the hell? Neutral jumping D, uh, neutral D Hangetsuzan. Sorry, neutral D Hangetsuzan. Uh, if you if the, if the opponent is throwing a lot of fireballs at you at a at a spacing where C Hakushu is unable to deal with them, then just neutral jump. You know, that's the best way to deal with fireballs in most fighting games. Obviously, if you jump forward or if you roll forward, they're going to be able to punish you. So just neutral jump and do a D Hungetsuzan. So if they run forward, trying to chase you, chase after the fireball, just do a D Hungetsuzan. You might just tag them in the face and get a stomp afterwards. And even if they, you don't get a hit, at least you're building bar and avoiding the fireball at the same time. And building a wall defense. Which, by the way, is block, uh, is uh, plus on block. So there's no, uh, you know, it's just full of benefits to do that. All right. Um, what else? If you're playing kind of keep away and trying to run down the timer, then go ahead and do back dash on Getsuzan. In this version of the patch, his Hangetsuzan doesn't move him that far, so it doesn't give him that much back dash distance. But you're still back dashing while building bar, so that's something to keep in mind. And if not, then just build meter with a stomp. It comes out. It recovers really fast. You know, there's no there's no risk of getting uh, punished for it unless they're really close to you. But that's one thing you can do. Offensively, you want to advance forward with far D and far B, and qu quick uh, canceling into quick max whenever you can. Um, again, you can follow up with far B into stomp every time. And another thing, hyper hop on Getsuzan. So B, if you're not aiming for a knockdown into stomp and get into and go into a combo and it's plus on block anyways um, D version if you do want to get the hard knockdown into the stomp so hyper hop on gets his eye also it's got a great hitbox because by the time they try to anti air you your hunk of design will have already come out and hit them all right when you have the corner you want to use the stomp more Condition them to get used to the follow-ups. Use mix of that first. Make them think about those mix-ups. And after a while, when they keep predicting that there's going to be a mix-up, don't do the mix-ups. Uh, see how they react. Maybe you could get an overhead. Maybe you'll catch them trying to roll out of it. Maybe you'll catch them, you know, wasting a guard cancer roll. You could punish them. Or if they're trying to jump out, stuff them with uh, stuff them with far D. Alright, what else? Uh, abuse is overhead too. If they don't know that there's a hole in between, just keep doing this. And see what you can get off it. You know, chip, minor damage, things like that. And let's see. If you're fighting against Gangyo, uh, don't let him get his ground game started because once it does, it's very difficult to deal with. There is a gap between his far beat into overhead string shenanigan. Uh, so if you want to press a button in between, the stomp is only plus one, so you can press a light and trade with him. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that on a CPU. So a CPU is going to be doing that against me. Uh, let's see, I don't think that's the best demonstration. There we go. So know that there is only a plus one frame advantage, so depending on the Gangyo player and what normals that you're used to seeing him throwing out after a stomp, 
you know, challenge him with a button that you know is a little bit faster. Alright, uh, what else? Don't waste bars doing guard cancel rolls against Gangyo because the follow ups, if you try to guard cancel roll backwards, he's gonna punish you. Uh, the follow ups will hit you anyways. I mean, if you guard cancel roll, uh, guard cancel roll forward, then he's gonna be able to punish you if he doesn't do any of the follow ups. So, uh, just be careful if you're trying to guard cancel roll through his stop mix ups. Alright, and one last thing, if you're um, zoning away, if you're trying to zone Gangyo, zone him from full screen because you can bait out the C version of Hakushu and then punish it. Alright, that's it for my Gangyo tutorial. Um, I guess I'm still a little bit rusty because uh, it's been a while since I did it, but I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. I think I'll be doing Angel or Alice next. Alright, thank you for listening.